Questions 55 to 58. A dilute um, aqueous solution of sucrose, okay, is hydrolyzed. As soon as you see the word hydrolyzed, it should do something for you. It's hydro, refers to water. Lysed is lysis. And in biology and chemistry, lysis means something is broken apart. So water is breaking something apart. Hydrolysis, hydrolysis. In an acidic solution to produce an equimolar mixture of that and that. And look, obviously, um, Acer put the uh, molecular formulas of glucose and fructose there just to underline for you that they're isomers. They, they have the same molecular formula, but they're, um, they're different arrangement, obviously, of, 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 of those mo molecules, and that's why they're two different molecules. The stoichiometric uh, reaction is given. And then uh, shorthand for sucrose is S, and uh, so they give some general information, and it's at 25 degrees Celsius, no surprise. That's the standard temperature for liquids, and uh, you have the constant there. Okay, question 55. An aqueous solution of 0.1 molar sucrose is prepared with a pH of 3 at temperature 25 degrees. What is the initial rate of hydrolysis? So we know that the uh, rate of hydrolysis, um, it's going to be, uh, the rate is going to be given um, by uh, Ks uh, and, um, and hydrogen uh, con concentration. We're given the pH, so because we're given the pH, that means we know the hydrogen ion concentration. Uh, the pH is, uh, is equal to 3, and you know, when you get used to this, you'll start doing this in your head. You'll just say, okay, so, um, I mean, you'll see how it works, but then after that, you'll be able to always do it. Because a pH of 3, I know already, it, that's 10 to the minus 3 uh, hydrogen ion concentration. But um, we'll just uh, work it out. Um, pH uh, of equal to 3 means that we have a negative, negative log um, hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 3 and that uh, means we take the negative of both sides that's log hydrogen ion concentration it's equal to negative 3 I would never do this on an exam of course but uh, just for those who need to see it and then um, the rule of logarithm is that you can raise both sides to the power of 10 okay raise both sides because 10 log 10 is just whatever is there. So that's just hydrogen uh, H plus is equal to 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so those are, that's just their rule of uh, logarithm. So we have the, um, the concentrate, we have K, which is uh, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5. We have S, which is just um, 10 to the minus 1. Okay, so S is 10 to the minus 1. This is 10 to the minus Three. So this multiplied together is uh, 10 to the minus 4. So we just need to multiply 10 to the minus 4 times k. So we don't have to write that out. We just look at what k is. It's 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5. We multiply 10 to the minus 4 by that. We have 10 to the minus 9 now. So it's 1.4 times 10 to the minus 9. The answer is A. And uh, we move on to question number 56. 56. As the hydrolysis of sucrose uh, um, progresses, the rate of change of the concentration of glucose will be equal to... So, uh, yes, the rate of change in these uh, equations... Look, if you have A plus B is going to uh, C plus D, uh, the rate of change... The rate of, the rate of decrease of A will equal to the rate of increase of C and uh, and the rate of and that's and the reason why is we have a stoichiometry of 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 and so as as this starts going up these will start being produced in a 1 to 1 way so had the stoichiometry been 1 to 2 then the rate would not be exactly the same so as this is going away because it's the reactant it's being used up these are being created at the same rate of course, because there's nothing being uh, created or destroyed. It's going from one form to another form. And so um, so the answer would be B, which is the rate of change of the sucrose concentration, uh, but it would have the opposite sign. 
So uh, it would be the same rate, but opposite in sign, because they're going in two different directions. One's being, um, one's reacting and one is being produced. So question uh, 57, together, the stoichiometric equation and the rate expression indicate that as the hydrolysis of sucrose progresses, so let's look at the stoichiometric equation. What we see is sucrose hydrolyzed with water, broken apart into glucose and fructose. Um, in the rate equation, we see K, we see the concentration of sucrose, and we see acid, H+. Plus. But we do not see H+, plus in the stoichiometric uh, reaction. Um, so, uh, but yet, H+, plus is very important, <laughs> because H+, plus is... Um, um, uh, this is called a second order reaction because the, we, we, um, we sum the exponents. The exponent here, when you don't see an exponent of all, we assume it's one, the exponent here is one. So this is a first order reaction with respect to hydrogen. It is a first order re reaction with respect to sucrose. Overall, it is a second order reaction. So hydrogen is very important. Uh, the proton, uh, the acid, is very important in making this uh, reaction occur, but it's not even in the stoichiometric equation, so we have to try to uh, make sense of that. It says uh, both S concentration S and uh, H increase, or they remain constant. Obviously, uh, sucrose does not remain constant; it's being used up in the reaction. And then S it decreases while H remains constant. Hmm, that has to ring a bell. Why is there no hydrogen in the stoichiometric? Um, uh, um, reaction is is there situations which would make that would make sense and there is they should have if they were polite and nice and kind they should have put an H plus on the arrow for the stoichiometric uh, reaction because hydrogen is clearly the catalyst for this reaction and of course catalysts um, just make the reaction occur faster but they are not uh, uh, used up because they did say that uh, in the first paragraph may be hydrolyzed in an acidic solution. They so they they did uh, you know give us a little uh, foreshadowing by saying in an acidic solution. So it is an acidic solution, but it would have been helpful to put the H plus on the arrow that would make us realize that this is a catalyst for the reaction. It makes the reaction occur uh, faster, but it's not used up in the, in the reaction. And then that points to answer choice C. It must be regenerated. So uh, this is uh, obviously a part of uh, hydrolysis. Okay, uh, question 58. Although water appears as a reactant in the stoichiometric equation, its concentration does not appear in the rate equation. Why, basically? And uh, so it's saying uh, water is automatically included in H plus aqueous? No, H plus aqueous only means that the H plus is uh, dissolved in water. It doesn't mean that it's not representing water as a reactant. Overall, no water is consumed by the chemical reaction. Um, obviously, water is consumed. This is hydrolysis. Um, water is not a reactant in the rate determining step. Indeed, hydrolysis, <laughs> hydro, water. And the concentration of water is so high that it remains effectively constant during the reaction. Bingo. And this is no surprise. This is the reason why for KW, um, it is equal to the concentration of hydrogen uh, times the concentration of OH minus, but you do not divide it by the reactant, which is water. You don't, because this is too high. The water level is too high, so it's incorporated into the constant. So if uh, similarly, this is just an analogy, similarly, when um, you have a reaction, when the, when the water uh, levels are so high that basically they are unchanged from one side to another, then it is uh, not incorporated into the constant. I just want to uh, remind you, of course, that if um, this is a second order reaction, and, uh, and so, you know, there are different orders of reaction, but if you were to see the concentration of this, uh, you would still see the concentration of S 
um, over time, with time, you would see this uh, decreasing like so. So that would be uh, for a um, second order reaction. For a first order reaction, I think we just uh, we did a little bit of a review that um, you would have the logarithm, the natural logarithm of S, um, and you would have a negative slope, constant negative slope, representing negative K, and um, and the change, the half life would be uh, constant, and we uh, and that would be over time. Second order reaction would be different. I'm not sure if they would ever ask you this, but they have asked this in their practice materials a um, uh, uh, few questions on, on uh, the differences between the uh, first order and second order reactions. And you can see that these are ex uh, exponential in terms of uh, their change. You can straighten it to a straight line by using the logarithm and um, and there's also, uh, this is going one step further, so I'm not sure if you would need to know this, but this is for the uh, second order reaction. They are also linear. The line is K, and this is over time, but it is one over the concentration. And that's what gets you the straight line with the slope of K. And this is the slope of negative K, as this is a negative slope and this is a positive slope. If you uh, want to learn more about uh, reaction uh, kinetics, um, these uh, sections will have it for you.